Hello and welcome to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where we are going to pick up right where we left off last week. Now, I should have mentioned last week that it was part one of a three-part series on terms related to lenses. If you are flipping through a trade magazine or visiting a trade show, and you stop by the lens manufacturer's booth, and they hand you a spec sheet for a new lens, it will often mention index, abbey, and specific gravity. Last week, we covered what index means. This week, we will cover abbey value or abbey number. And next time, we'll try to cover specific gravity. And if you have been observant, you may have caught on by now that Abby has something to do with red, yellow, and blue. Said we would pick things up right where we left off, and sure enough, here we are at index of refraction, and we're gonna be talking again about that energy interference, or the theory of energy interference. The index of refraction is a way of expressing the relationship between the speed of light in air or a vacuum and the speed of light in any given material. Now, when we say the speed of light or energy for the index of refraction, we are talking about the entire range. We picture it or model it as a bundle, one single ray of the visible spectrum, ranges roughly from 700 to 400 nanometers. It covers red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. We think of that band of energy, the visible spectrum, as one unit or one piece or one thing moving along together. That's the index of refraction. How fast does this bundle pass through a given material? Just like the index of refraction, we are simply assigning a numerical value or rewording or restating the relationship between different things. What are those things that we are comparing and then assigning a new numerical value? The speed of light or index of refraction of the individual wavelengths of light that make up the full visible spectrum we pull out yellow, we pull out blue, and we pull out red. Literally, pull, pull them out of the spectrum and examine them as individual wavelengths. Assign them their own individual index of refraction. Now, how is that determined? <sighs> way, way beyond our scope of understanding or our need to know. We need to know what Abbey value has to do with lens design, and that's where we're headed. Let's go with this for just another moment or two. Our red wavelength, 700 nanometers. Remember last time we talked about the theory of energy interference, that the material, the lens material that this light is gonna enter is comprised of energy itself. It's the atoms that hold it together and give it its unique properties. If my wave is longer, it has less chance in theory of encountering the energy interference and will pass through my lens material faster than my blue with that crazy tiny little 400. Lots and lots and lots of chances of it interfering, slowing down. So as this light band passes through, my red actually passes through even plate faster than it does, than blue does. Completely and totally imperceptible to the human eye. But once we throw a lens, a true lens profile, a prism, and we look at that lens from optical center out, that's when things get ugly, and that's when Abbey matters. Let me show you how we actually achieve an Abbey value of 30 for polycarbonate, and then we'll show you why the, how those different rates, how blue traveling at a different rate than red, as compared to yellow, can cause problems for the wearer. Let's look at two examples of working the equation for two materials that we're familiar with, glass and polycarbonate. 
course, we all love to pick on polycarbonate, so let's start there. The equation, how we determine or reassign a value, an Abbey value for a given material, is the index of refraction for one specific isolated wavelength of yellow, minus one, divided by one individual strand wavelength of blue, subtracted from the individual index of refraction for a single wavelength of red. Where do you find that? How did I find the individual index of refraction for single wavelengths of the individual bands of light within the visible spectrum? I couldn't, right? I had to turn to Keith, the physics guy. We needed it in order to give you an example, but it's really outside the scope of understanding and, and what we need to know. And, and that'll become clear in just a couple of minutes, all right? If I run with my equation, and this is what matters, is the difference between my outliers of blue and red 0.019. Now, without comparing it to anything, that doesn't seem like tells us much. It's huge, okay? That's, this is where we're going. This is the important part. Doesn't seem like it, but that's an enormous difference. The bigger the difference between these two, the lower the Abbey value, the slower, and this is it, okay? If blue and red are in the race across polycarbonate, right, my red is gonna come out ahead. How much ahead? A lot ahead. And that's not a good thing. They're separating, they're breaking. They are creating dispersion. Not something we want in a lens. Let's look at glass. We won't run through the whole thing again. Break it all down. The index of refraction for the individual wavelengths of light in glass breaks down like this. Look at my infinitesimal difference between the two. As my blue and my red race across my lens, in this, because it has an Abbey value of 59, the difference is not great on how much faster they travel. My red only comes out little tiny, tiny little bit. The greater the difference between these two, the lower the Abbey value and the more dispersion you have. Let's see why that matters and get this over with. Whoa, all right, I need to take a break for a minute. On the Optician Works website, as you work through the Optician Works program, I repeatedly say, don't get frustrated. Don't get discouraged. Keep working through it. There are going to be times when you are frustrated, you are confused, you are discouraged. Putting this piece together for me was just like that. When I find myself reading white papers from the Proceedings of the International School and Conference on Photonics, from the Department of Physics of the University of Bulgaria called Dispersion Properties of Optical Polymers, I'm not having a good day, right? This is beyond me. I understand it at the level of an optician. I do not understand it at the level of a physicist. So I'm just doing my best here to distill this down connect up the pieces as best that I can to better explain or have a little bit better idea for you of where this stuff comes from. Like the stuff from index of refraction last time, that energy interference and the relationship to density, that was actually kind of fun. This, not so much. The, the, how they find the index of refraction for a given wavelength of light and gas and Fraunhofer lines, honestly, guys, way beyond me. So I get frustrated. Um, I get lost. I only have the capacity of an optician brain, so bear with me. What I'm about to put up, however, um, I think will make sense. All right, let's see if we can't put these pieces together. We've got sunlight, sunlight pours down and strikes my object, the car, light reflects off still as a bundle of the electromagnetic spectrum, the visible spectrum. It strikes a lens, it enters the lens, it will slow down, it will refract, and we just learned 
that now as it goes through refraction, each individual wavelength within that bundle of the visible spectrum is going to travel through that lens at a different rate. When it leaves the lens again, it's gonna whiz along in space until it hits something. Hopefully the back of your eye after a lens, because we're opticians. The red wavelength is going to end up in a different place. It went through here faster, it tra it's traveled further than the yellow or the blue. Now, at the OC of a lens, this is happening kind of, but it is at such a rate that we could never ever perceive it in almost any way, scientifically even, it's almost imperceptible. As you leave the OC and get into the periphery of your lens, it increases. Now, at the OC, it's almost imperceptible, and only in rare cases does it even happen in an ordinary lens when you get out towards the edges. But this is what's happening. As Abby increases dispersion, the spread decreases. So if I have a beautiful glass lens with an Abby of 60, these are, these are together, these are overlapping. You could barely make out the red, the yellow, and the blue. And with 30, my polycarbonate, very spread out. Okay, big overlap. If I am wearing a cheap, nasty polycarbonate lens that wasn't really made very well, and I'm looking just like this, and I'm looking at this bright light up here in the corner, I can actually see the breakdown of white light. I will see that rainbow effect, the full Roy G. Biv of that visible spectrum. Dispersion. So what is Abby as a definition? It is answering the question numerically, how prone is this given lens material to causing dispersion? Or in other words, how bad is this going to be for a given lens material? Now, what does all this mean to you as an optician? Do keep in mind, of course, as power goes up, the likelihood of this goes up as well. So power plays a role here. The curves of the lens play a role here. Good base curve to power matching is critical to reduce this. Surfacing techniques to create the curves which give us the power. So yes, using a great lab like Laramie K can actually help reduce and control this. Obviously, where appropriate, use a lens with the higher Abbey value. Now, not everybody is sensitive to this. Some people, they'll pick this up in a heartbeat, where others will never notice it. The rest really comes down to you. Just having those good, solid optician skills, the stuff that we talk about in other videos and on the website. Frame size, and really good accurate measurements as that power increases. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure that every lens, regardless of what its Abbey value might be, comes from Laramie K. If you're watching me on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. If you're watching us on Facebook, please give us a like, leave us a comment, and I will see you again next week. <laughs>